Good morning, ladies. Welcome, friends. This is Farmer John in the backyard. What is this? What is this? I'm interested. You know, they really, um, they love it when I, uh, pry up these stones, these flagstones, because that's where all the uh, grubs and bugs are hanging out. But uh, the stones are on the outside, so. I reckon if I pry one open right here, I'm gonna get you fixated. If I pry this one open, I'm gonna get you back at a good angle. If I pry this stone up, <laughs> see how they all pay attention? They all get excited. If I pry this one up right here, I'm gonna try to scurry the bugs that way, but the bugs are no stranger to these things, these bipedal birds. These bipedal homunculi monsters. <laughs> They'll try to scurry my way and uh, we'll see if uh, we can get them going that way. So. There you go. Oh, oh, we got some things jumping around. Some grasshoppers, actually. Yep, this is a grasshopper. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Stay put, stay put. See that? See those ladies? See, they pay attention. These got like grasshoppers. I should keep them here so they can keep procreating. But, uh, can we focus on this? See if we can get a, a close up. <laughs> Hello. You're on, uh, you're on TV. <laughs> I'm just getting that out. Be careful. Oh, they're tearing them apart. Ah, ow, ow, ow. What a way to go. His life. C'est la vie. <laughs> but we won't share. We won't spoil them too much. That's for, um, that's where I, when I let them out, I'll take up all these stones all along the uh, perimeter of the coop, the pan, chicken run, all these flag stones. I guarantee you. Even right here underneath this uh, little this tree, every one of them stones is holding. A family, an ecosystem of bugs and whatnot. And, you know, it's work for me, but it's fun for them because they get all the nutrition, they get a good source of protein from them, bugs. But, um, we'll do that for another video. We'll spoil them for another video. <laughs> Still in the wee hours of the morning. They're drooping over. They have water. Actually, it's still moist, quite moist, these pots. They're drooping over because they're not too used to the sun. I left them out all day yesterday. Uh, I'm not really keen about that one. I'll probably just replace it with one of these two. These two have, are, are the best so far. But, uh,. That's not on today's focus. Today's focus is on the corn, transplanting the corn. On that back row where I originally planted the kernels, only two have come up, those two right there. That there in the middle is some kind of cantaloupe or um, pumpkin. See, one of the dogs had gotten in the bed and kicked over all this dirt. You know, they just dug in there. And what was that? What well, was supposed to be on that side of the uh, the bed of the pumpkin? So how this one got all the way over here? He guessed it. He just shifted the seeds over here, but it's fine. Look at this. The pumpkins are getting their true leaves out. I might give them a nitrogen feeding. A uh, nitrogen. Whoa. Hello. There's, bunch, there's bees around me. Look at that. Bees all around me. Oh, excuse me. And he's trying to snap it. <laughs> there he is. Also. Leave them bees alone. <laughs> okay, there's a lime on the ground that's rotting and it smells actually, it smells sweet. It smells citrusy, so that's just attracting that bee there. Where'd he go? Don't know if it was honeybee or whatnot, but also likes them. Also, 
finds a lot of kind of entertainment. There he goes. Oh. And to the lime tree. Okay. Anywho. Back on track. Let's not get distracted. Let's try not to cover whatever's growing here because I see something growing right here. A little tiny thing right here. Actually, these might. These are the onions. They're barely coming through. You can't tell on the camera, but I, I'm seeing little bits of. right there. There it is. Now you can barely see it. Tiny little thing. Look at, them, look at my fingernail. Tiny compared to my nail. But that's an onion there. They're kind of scattered all around, actually. Kind of scattered all around. Which I laid a. I laid a, a row of a bunch of onions this way. So it's parallel to where I grew it. Even though the dogs, whichever dog kicked up the dirt, seems to have just survived. That's great. I love that. Right, so this back wall is where we're going to transplant the corn. There's four corn right here. Uh, one kernel per tray, or cell, I mean. We're just going to uh, make it situated here. We're just going to prop them up, squeeze and push up at the that drainage hole. Pull them ever so gently. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to use a popsicle stick to kind of pop them out of there. As so. There we go. I'll lay them down right here. Why not? No harm done. Next one. Just agitate. Squeeze the sides. Agitate it. Pull it up. Oh, look. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? Good. Red system. Now, corn don't take transplanting well. That's why people don't usually grow corn indoors and transplant them. And they, they just direct sow them. But, uh, ain't no harm. It's just a test. See how they react. Oop, oop, oop. This one's breaking apart. And come out too easy like the other two. Well, that's fine. Right, which one it is? Squeeze the sides. Helps to squeeze the sides. I need that. Gently pull. You can grab the grab hold of the soil block. Go ahead and pull that out too. There you go. What else is in there? I have uh, the eggplants and the cantaloupes in there. We'll grow them accordingly. I mean, they're not ready for transplanting, so no way. Let's see how many fingers? About to my middle knuckle, my middle fingers. So let's get in there. There's a uh, 12 foot bed. No. Uh, 12 inches? No. It must be. About 12 inches. They got a hole for it. Right there. They take up a lot of space, these corn. But um, we kind of need them close together in close proximity so that they can self pollinate each other. So I'll probably go. Six inches from that, from that hole, and I'm planting them at the same, the same depth of the cell. I'm not going any further, any lower, and I'm planting it right at the surface level of this cell. Crop it, and if it's not quite there, I'll just mound it up like this. If I didn't go quite deep, I'll just mound it up. Compact it a bit, make a little, since I'm here, make a little a well for it to capture the water. A little well on this one too, why not? Why not? That's what gardening's about. There's no format for everything, you know? I mean, there is. There's a format for just about anything, but life is forever unchanging. Plop this one here, round it up, 
very sandy soil. And the native soil is sandy and rocky. Make a little well for it. Make sure it's compact because it was it felt loose. It felt loose. Okay. For this one that I busted up all all nice and whatnot. We could go to that corner over there. We got one, two, three, four, five. We'll put the sixth one that was grown indoors on that corner. Over. Yes. Well, hopefully, it doesn't get too disturbed. It doesn't get too sad that I disrupted its soil block. We'll see. Mound it up. Same soil level. Compact it. So let me level out all this soil that's here in the corner. For some reason, it's higher than the rest of the bed. Get, you know, clean out. These little rocks and stems and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Tap everything down, get these rocks out of here. These pumpkins, eh, whatever, let's finish up. Compact to make a little well for it, capture the water, even out the uh, surrounding soil. So that's not a, like a miniature terrace where it'll erode, it'll erode the soil at its end. See, it's all higher up on this end. So we're just going to drag that down. Keep things level. That stick out of there. In the center of the bed, towards that way, in the center of the bed, it kind of makes a bowl. That's where the onions are at. I don't mind that. I want a level bed so that everything's getting the right amount of moisture, water. The water doesn't dissipate and erode the surface because of gravitation. That's fine. See? I got my corn. That's how easy it is. Three, four, five, six corns. Um, those pumpkins are a little too close over there, but I'm going to let them go. I don't mind it. There's like that other pumpkin that is supposed to be on this back wall that got kicked over. Made it somehow over there to the center. As well as that one right there. Look, 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 look. Look right here. Up, oh, zoom in. There we go. This is the sugar pumpkin. Whoops. I knocked over its seed. No. Oh. It was kind of banging on that seed. It was, look at that, the paper is still there. From the germ of the seed. This is the sugar pumpkin. It's a little yellow because I pulled out the seed. And you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful around your seedlings. You don't want to disturb them too much. That's a sugar pumpkin, as well as well, that one over there, and that one right there. They should be. There's no way one of them giant lanterns came over here. When I came out that day, uh, this corner was dug out. The middle of that bed was dug out, so a couple of corners, corner kernels, corn kernels probably didn't make it, and the center of the onion bed was dug out. So a lot of devastation. On this two rows, I planted okra, but they're looking like cantaloupes or pumpkins. I'm not really sure why. I don't know. This is my first time seeing okra seed germinate. Oh, look, we got some bug damage right there. And those true leaves coming up look like the rigid, you know, the rigid kind of leaves like a pumpkin would have. So, could be that with the watering, it washed the, uh, pumpkin seeds or cantaloupe seeds this way. That's probably what happened, but I guarantee there was a row of okra. Oh, look at that. There's a nub here. <laughs> the leaves are gone, but there's a nub here. It's just the stem. Look at that. Something came and ate those leaves. Oh. There's a seedling here. I'm not sure what it is. Hmm. I see little seedlings all around here. These are probably the onions. The onions or the okra. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It could be weeds, too. Oh, that's beautiful. 
I'm really uh, banking on these sugar pumpkins and that corn. It, the jack o' lanterns, I could care less. You know, they're they're more of an aesthetic. They're more of a for fun kind of crop. But the edible crops, that's what we're banking on. <clears throat> so all I got left in my tray is the peppers, eggplants, and those cantaloupes. And once those cantaloupes get their true leaves, as these pumpkins do, we're gonna transplant them. Not in this bed, obviously there's not enough space. Maybe I'll do it around the, on the lawn. Just make mounds of dirt, put them on the lawn so they can spread through all this potential lawn. Get a good green covering here. That'd be nice. And there'd be cantaloupes, so that'd be nice to look at. Look over here. I made this bed, that's probably the first bed I ever made, way back when. It's made out of pallet wood. <laughs> it's just one ply pa uh, pallet wood, about uh, four inches, I think. And this volunteer plant, it looks like nothing right now because of the heat. It dried up, but I, I'm telling you, it's alive. I'm telling you right now, it's alive. The core of the plant is alive. This is a um, pequeño chile. Pequeño chile is a bird chili because that's how it propagates itself by the droppings of birds. There are these uh, itty bitty little chilies that peck a hell of a punch. <laughs> they're, they're delicious, you know. They come in green and red. Well, they, they turn green. They turn red from green once they're ripe. But uh, they volunteered and I just left it as is. It's nice to have chilies. And uh, it's been here for years. It'll look like this in the summer, it'll look like this in the winter, but it keeps coming back. That's just how it works. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna use this bed. I have this little section here. I don't know what that is, some kind of volunteer plant. We're gonna leave it. This is where I'm gonna transplant the tomatoes and uh, maybe the cantaloupes. So they can vine that way, you know, maybe that way a little bit. But. Um, this will be the bed they'll be transplanting in the eggplants. <laughs> I don't plant anything. If there's if these onions don't make it and take up the room, I'll plant these eggplants in here. Those eggplants in here. And the peppers, why not? Or I'll tell you what, we'll just make another I have tons of plywood deconstructed over there. I'll just make another bed. You know? I don't plan anything. You know, whatever happens, happens. But uh, that's it for this morning's outdoor chores. <laughs> awesome. right there. He's posted up. He's calm and collected, you know. <sighs> that breeze. It's a nice breeze. For this early in the morning, it's nice. Let's see how hot it is before we sign off. 81 degrees. And this is early morning. See, the sun's barely coming over. 81 degrees and it gets about 78 at night. So, toasty. They said it was about to hit 99 or 100 degrees. I could feel it. We're transitioning, transitioning to the autumn weather and it feels nice. So, welcome friends. I almost forgot to show you, I was about to feed. I'll also just show you guys again. Uh, fish emulsion fertilizer. It's all water soluble. Oh, <laughs> before I shake it violently, I forgot there's a break in here somewhere. So, not so violent this time. <laughs> Should do a gentle shake. There it is. Found the break. It's wonderful. It smells amazing. It's on my hands. My hands are going to be smelling like this for a couple hours. But uh, how much I put? I put about two teaspoons, maybe three teaspoons. T 
teaspoons, not tablespoons. And that's enough. For this little jug, at least. I'll wash my hands off over a plant or something. Yeah. Try and get them what they want. Try to stir it up with the nozzle, with the hose. Stir it up. And then bring it up a little bit so I can like turn up the mixture. <laughs> now what's that on my hand? Dirt. That's about good. Halfway, maybe two thirds of the way. Let's go feed them. Yep, yep, yep. A foliage feeding, plus it'll feed whatever kind of microbial life is in here. And it won't burn the plant, so the seedlings can handle this as well. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Later.